Seattle author Jane Wong is here with her first memoir, A Story of Both Food and Family. Her book, Meet Me Tonight in Atlantic City, shows what it was like for Jane to grow up with her family running a Chinese-American restaurant on the Jersey Shore. Jane joins me now. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Amity. So, I mean, pretty cool. You grew up on the Jersey Shore near Atlantic City, and you describe yourself as a restaurant baby. Yes. So tell us more about why that is and why food is so important to you. Yes, uh, it's kind of a term I sort of made up of sorts, which just basically means like everyone knows that there's this kid that's in the restaurant that has like like nothing to do. <laughs> um, you're just like, why is this kid here yeah. like all day long? And it's just the restaurant kid, like the, yeah, I love you know, that. family restaurants, you know, to support them. Um, yeah, so I grew up in a Chinese American takeout restaurant on the Jersey Shore, and I would basically start writing stories. Oh, oh. Um, really? Yeah, on, for, on the menus for like my favorite customers. And so, yeah, food is like central look to my family. Look at how cute you are as a little restaurant Oh my gosh, baby. look at those giant cheeks. I mean, I was called Bao Bao for a reason. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. You are adorable, uh, I can't even. So the way you organize the book is very unique, I've noticed. Mm -hmm. One particular chapter really hit me. It was called Root Canal Street, mm -hmm. where every tooth, you go mm -hmm. through all the teeth and the yeah. names of the teeth, and every tooth has another story. What made you decide to tell the story in that way? Mm, thank you for that question. I feel like in so many ways, like I like to experiment and play with form. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to like have the reader be in this position of like feeling like they were at the dentist. And the dental assistant's like calling out all the like, yeah. you know, like numbers and all the like notes to kind of write yeah. down. And it's interesting too, because that particular essay, you know, talks a lot about growing up without, mm -hmm. you know, health insurance and going to like illegal dentists. And so it's kind of like a play off of like, I haven't been in that situation where it was actually, um, you know, like someone was like, there was yeah. a dental assistant who was calling out numbers and it was just a little more sketchy, I suppose. Yeah. Um, in New York City's Chinatown, so it's like a play off of it. I wanted it, it to be also like, you know, funny in a weird way because there's that scene where like you try to find the grandma <laughs> who's going to take you to yeah. the illegal dentist, <laughs> yes. um, and you have to bribe her with like. But it yeah. yeah, but it underscores the fact about you know access to that yes, and yeah. what is. Right. Um, you know, people who are blessed with the ability mm. to go to the dentist. I mean, yeah. it, it really, it, it just, it, it talked about so much, saying so little, and mm. I thought that was so wonderful. You also talk about your father and mm. um, his gambling addiction. Yes. In the wider context of Asian American immigrant life in the U.S., can you tell us more about that? Yes, uh, yeah, I actually just uh, ended my tour in Atlantic City, so that was incredibly emotional. I haven't gone in over 20 years. Oh, wow. Yes, yes, because it was, you know, a fraught um, to return. Absolutely, very triggering for you. Exactly, and so, you know, I really wanted to shine a light on, you know, my family's personal story of, you know, how we lost the restaurant it was due to my father's gambling addiction. Yeah. But I realized that so many other families, you know, who come from low income immigrant family mm -hmm. backgrounds, yeah. you know, these buses, these casino buses pick up oftentimes from Chinatowns and they like, you know, try to get you to go gamble. So yeah. it's, it's, you know, in many ways what it means to be targeted. Um, yeah. And so yeah, I mean, it's a heartbreaking targeted. story. Still happen I mean, all the time, yes. everywhere, even today. Mm -hmm. um, your memoir is also a love letter to your mother. There's yeah. a, one story I was we were talking about where, where <laughs> she's getting you a dress for a special mm -hmm. occasion. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just, oh, it's so beautiful. And there's your mommy right there. Uh, Tell us about your relationship or, with her and why it's so unique. Yeah, she is the biggest love of my life. Oh. Uh, I know, truly. There's like a funny scene where she actually says, like, I'll be your boyfriend, <laughs> like in the book too, <laughs> which, you know, but she really is. I mean, I think that, you know, she came here to the US, she was arranged to marry my father, you know, when mm. she was very, very young. And in many ways, we kind of grew up together. Yeah. You know, she's kind of like my mom, my best friend, totally my sister, everything, my entire worldview. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of this like weird cosmic connection that we, we have. Like sometimes she'll know whether or not I'm like, you know, feeling ill or like she'll just call up me up and be like, don't uh. forget to drink some soup today. You're not feeling great. I'm like, how did you know that? <laughs> um, so, yes. It's and I just love a that you love honor it. that. I do. Yeah. Um, you weave Asian American artists, writers, and thinkers. Um, 
really deeply into your story. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about these artists and what they've inspired you in life. Yeah, I actually also teach Asian American literature. I'm a professor, and it's like one of my true loves is to teach Asian American literature. Um, that's a hard question because like I want to just like have an entire syllabus of sorts. <laughs> um, but oh my gosh, like I was so inspired by kind of seeing myself on the page, right? Like yeah. to see a writer <clears throat> who kind of like looks like you. Um, I think Teresa Hak Young Cha and her book Dictate was like fundamental for me as someone who can experiment and yeah. play with different mediums and visual art and poetry and prose. Um, but of course, I have like a lot of my friends are like my, my contemporaries, yes. right? Um, I want to give a shout out, and she's in the book, of course, um, to my best friend Michelle Penulosa, who's an amazing Aww. Filipina poet, uh, Filipino American poet, and. Uh, yeah, she's missed in Seattle. She moved away, so oh. I'm always trying to get her to come back. But well, we are going to have you come back. We'll, we'll let you prepare the syllabus. Yes, come on back. You'll give us a full reading lesson. We'll discuss yeah. it. So I can't wait to see you again soon. It's summer reading time, so let's read some Asian We're American books. Done. It's happening. Thank you so oh much, gosh, and thank, thank you for you. writing this absolutely beautiful book. It will take you on an adventure. It's a great summer read.